am excited to introduce our next guest. Sam Morris has an amazing story, which I'll let him share. And he is going to help us go into a Zen mode around all the swirling insanity. So Sam, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. It's so good to be here. Thank you. It is a little bit insane. It's not enough that there's a pandemic. It's not enough that there's election ins insanity. It's uh, whatever we could heap on to this year. Here come the holidays. And, you know, as much as I love to think that everybody's having happy, joy-filled holidays, I know it's not true for absolutely everyone, but before we jump in there, please share some of your story because you're doing amazing work in the world and I want everyone to know about you. Well, thank you, Lauren. I, I'm happy to. Uh, so I guess the, the most significant, if you will, part of my story starts in 1999. At the time, uh, I had just finished leading a cycling trek across the United States for nine teenagers. And um, I was 24 years old, or in fact, I was 23 when the cycling trek happened. And we biked 3,800 miles and uh, camped every night, cooked all our own meals. And this was the biggest challenge of my entire life. And I was an outdoor leader. I was finishing up college and I was doing outdoor leadership work in the summers. And um, I was very active as a skier and a snowboarder and a hiker and cyclist and everything to do with the outdoors. I just love spending time in nature and leading outdoor expeditions and uh, so shortly after that expedition completed in August of 1999, two and a half months later in November of 1999, I was riding in the back seat of a car driven by a drunk driver and he lost control of the car and spun off a dirt road and hit a tree. And that uh, accident or incident, I've learned to call it an incident versus an accident because I don't really believe that accidents happen, incidents happen. That incident uh, broke my T12 vertebra and left me paralyzed from the navel down. And so that has been my condition for the past 21 years. And so I have been on this healing journey, if you will, for the past couple of decades that continues to this day. And uh, that healing journey has taught me so much about human potential, about um, mindfulness and uh, self-awareness and uh, how to overcome one's challenges with a sense of grace and, uh, and ease versus being in conflict with one's circumstances. Uh, and back in 2014, I began a coaching and uh, sort of sort of coaching slash spiritual guidance program called Zen Warrior Training. Um, and this was after years of receiving feedback from people that I was inspiring them. And for a long time, I would just kind of take that at face value and say, well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that my life and how I live it has been inspiring. And then in 2014, I realized that I was receiving this input on practically a daily basis and so I realized that what I was being, having mirrored back to me was giving, was showing me something about my own life's purpose and what I was here to do. And I realized that part of what I'm here to do on earth in this lifetime is to help people to find a centered, peaceful, empowered disposition and to navigate the uncertain circumstances of life from a place of grace and ease versus being in an antagonistic relationship to one's challenges. Wow. Wow. It puts things in perspective, doesn't it? Mm. And, it does. And from your Zen warrior position, which the name is inspiring all by itself, um, I, I think that's just a, a wonderful expression of how you've chosen to move forward in your life. So congratulations. And I can totally see why you would get those, um, you know, that feedback that you're an inspiration on a daily basis and how amazing that you've been able to grow into that space. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I realized, you know, we're, we're all as human beings, we're more similar, we're more alike than we are different. And while my situation was, um, you know, dealing with physical paralysis, I realized that my physical paralysis really, I mean, this might sound kind of intense to say, but it's really nothing more than an inconvenience when it really comes down to it. Wow. And the only thing that can really cause paralysis is a psychological feeling of being stuck or limited in some way. And so my physical paralysis served kind of as a catalyst for me to do a lot of self-examination and see, well, what is this? What are we talking about when we're talking about paralysis? And for me, it's never been about my physical limitations. It's been about my mental psychological relationship to my limitations versus the limitation itself. So the, a combination of the choices you make and a mindset around them, is that, is that pretty much where you went with that? That's absolutely accurate. Absolutely correct. And is um, that how you're helping people now through Zen Warrior on, on their spiritual and I guess it's a, it's a new mindset and a new perspective? It is. It is. And the thing that I think is the, the key to understand is that as human beings, we create a lot of our own narrative, our own drama around our lives, especially when we are experiencing times of challenge, when we are experiencing uncertain circumstances. And those uncertain circumstances can trigger feelings inside of us of feeling unsafe or unwelcome or, um, like sort of isolated inside of ourselves. And that experience, those triggers make us feel stuck. That's what creates that feeling of stuckness. That's what creates that feeling of isolation. And there's something about the way that this works where it seems like just about every human being in the midst of their own challenges thinks, I must be the only person who experiences this to the degree to which I do. Right. And I think that's there's, that's, it's something it's yeah, very, that's, very that's common. Isolation. And don't, don't you just find yourself always saying you're not alone? Like I totally, I get it. You're not alone. That's a line that I think I've heard more since the pandemic began because it is the first time I think that the whole world is sharing an experience. And, that is so true. That is so true. There's, and I think that that's, you know, in the midst of all of this chaos that we are all experiencing and all the uncertainty, I think that that is one of the key beautiful takeaways in this is that the entire world to a certain degree is experiencing the same phenomenon. Now we might be experiencing it in different ways and having different opinions about it and that type of thing, but we all are sharing in a common challenge. And I think there's something really kind of profound and beautiful about that. I, I agree. I, being able to talk with friends around the world um, about how the experience of the pandemic has affected them, has affected us or me personally, just on the broader scale, I mean, I live in Southern California, but I've been COVIDing on the East Coast with my family in order to help with children and parents. And I would never have it any other way. There have been ridiculous blessings in the situation. Um, I'm sure for you as well. I mean, I know that not needing to travel as much has probably not been an inconvenience for you, right? It makes things a little bit easier. Well, that's actually true. That's actually true, yeah. Um... You know, I, I feel like I was actually pretty well prepared for COVID uh, given past life experiences that I've had. I've, I've spent uh, over two years combined, uh, not at one time, but over two years total lying completely immobilized in hospital beds from secondary injuries from, from my paralysis. And so 
that's a very isolating and alienating feeling. And so that sort of conditioned me to be able to handle quarantine with uh, maybe a, a little more grace than I might have otherwise. So taking that into the other part of our conversation, what a great segue, thank you so much. <laughs> but uncertainty and isolation are really keys for so much bad stuff. Um, oh, yes. It's just the stories in our heads and, and by isolating, we're only talking to ourselves. How do you coach people through situations of uncertainty and, uh, and isolation like we have. And then on top of that, I wanna just add the cherry on top is everyone who has a hard time through the holidays, I know believes they're the only one who is not having a yeah. great holiday, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I think you just spoke to one of the first things to remember is that you are not alone, that there are so millions of people also experiencing isolation and alienation and, uh, and, and feeling like there is a, um, a lack of connection between themselves and their families and their friends, their loved ones. And during this time, I think that that feeling is being amplified more than ever. Um, on the one hand, we have a lot of people who are orienting around, well, let's use this to as a time to connect more. And, uh, and then on the other hand, we have also people who are very much uh, triggered and emotionally reactive in this situation. And that can lead to more of that feeling of isolation and alienation. So first of all, recognizing that you're not alone is huge of the thoughts and the feelings that your true essence is that which witnesses your thoughts and feelings versus that which feels like it's the subject of the thoughts and feelings. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I would love to be able to direct our viewers to find out more from you and certainly to uh, seek out some assistance if they find they need it because there's just a lot of energy swirling around us right now. So oh, we absolutely. would love to make this season as positive for everyone as possible. So where can our viewers find you, Sam? Well, they can reach out to me. I'm just going to go ahead and give your viewers my private email address and they can reach out to me. You can send me an email if this is something that you would like some additional guidance with. You can just email me at sam at zenwarriortraining.com and I'm happy to respond to any email and see if I can be of support to you. That's very generous. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to share with us. I really, really appreciate it. I know everyone does. Well, Lauren, we'll it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me on today. We'll see you again. And we'll be right back.